Thank you for joining me today for Your Dad Academy. Please like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're going to be talking about the four main types of plants. Out in the outback, you got to be careful. There might be a wild bear chasing you. Oh no, there's one now. Ah, you're a bear. Thank goodness this isn't an animal video where I'm the expert on animals. I'm actually going to be talking about plants. I just threw this fun video in there for you to get started. Okay, let's look at this picture for a minute. We can call it four main groups of plants. You can call it plant phylogeny. You can call it evolution. But basically there's four main groups of plants. There's mosses, which are non-vascular, which means no true xylem, phloem, no roots. And then the next evolutionary step was ferns. So the ferns, they do not have seeds, they release spores from those sori on the underside of their leaves, but they're a little bit bigger than the mosses because they have xylem phloem and they have roots that hold them in place and help to deliver the nutrients higher up to those leaves. Then you have the conifers, which could also be called gymnosperms, which means naked seed plants. And they are vascular also, and that vascularity helps to have the xylem go all the way up to the top of those really high trees. And so these are an evolutionary advantage also. They have those cones that protect the seeds, but again, they're mostly dependent on the wind to help pollinate the pine cone that we talk about in this video. And the most evolutionary advanced plant are flowering plants, also known as angiosperms. They have flowers, but not all flowers lead to fruits, but all fruits once came from flowers. And so let's watch this video to learn about the four main groups of the plants. All right, so we're gonna be talking about the very simple types of plants. Now, the most simple type, the most uh, least evolved type is moss. This green moss is almost like a carpet. These are non-vascular plants. And so that means they don't have a true root structure to hold them in place. They're just kind of there. There's no roots anchoring them in there and they're really small. And so this generation most likely is the gametophyte generation. If you can zoom in on that for me, my camera girl is zooming in for me. And mostly these are the gamete forms of this plant and the sporophyte form would grow out of it and would release spores to grow more moss. These do not have seeds. These are very, very basic plants. And there's some moss right here and you can see it growing on this dead tree stump and it's growing in it and it's breaking it down as part of the process. This is some real healthy moss growing and I can see some of the sporophytes growing up out of the gametophyte here and it's gonna release spores to make more of the moss. Very cool. This right here is a perfect example of the sporophytes growing out of the gametophyte generation. They grow right out of the gametophyte generation on the moss right here. So a lot of people call this moss, this is Spanish moss. This actually is a much more advanced type of uh, plant. This actually is an angiosperm, which actually has flowers. But even though the name is moss, it's not really like the moss that I just showed you. So these right here are the roots of the tree and they anchor it in place. And they also absorb the nutrients in there up the stem. And so the xylem will carry the water and the nutrients, the nitrogen and phosphorus up the stem, up to the branches where the leaves are. The leaves are where the photosynthesis will take place and that's where it makes the glucose, the sugar. And then phloem will carry that sugar to every single cell in the plant. Phloem delivers it to every cell so that it has energy from photosynthesis. It's probably gonna break, but this is really, I did a really good job right here. So. Right here, there are roots growing here, and actually the gametophyte generation is under here, and that would be called a prothallus. And this part grows up out of the prothallus. This is the fern frond. So this is the first type of plant that actually has vascular tissue, which has xylem phloem, and these are actually the roots that hold it in place. And if you zoom in real quick right here, Look right here, you can see the little root hairs that increase the surface area so the roots can absorb more nutrients and water. 
And so what you usually see on the underside of these leaves are little tiny dots. And I'm gonna add them here for what they would look like for you. But these little tiny dots would be where you would see spores forming underneath the leaves. And so those little dots are called sori that would be on the underside of these leaves, but they're not ready to do that yet, so we don't have those yet on our ferns that we found. Right here, let's review alternation of generations. This is mostly the gametophyte generation that you see, and any of the little parts that are sticking up right here is probably going to be a sporophyte generation. This is the lowest evolved form of plants. Then you have ferns, which the, the gametophyte generation is much smaller under here, and the sporophyte generation grows out of that plant. And then we have be talking about this tree right here. This is a conifer, it's a pine tree. And so follow me and we're gonna look at some of the, uh, the female pine cones that it has dropped over here. Come on over, come on over. And so there's a couple female pine cones, pine. the pine trees, okay, which is the next of all form of plants, but their seeds are naked seeds. And so they uh, fertilize the eggs inside of the pine cone and then the seeds fall out of the pine cone. So the male pine cone is this part right here. So the male pine cone makes the pollen or the sperm that will fall into a female pine cone right here and fertilize her. This one has a lot of seeds in it. Do you see them right in here, the seeds right here? I can see if I can try to get them out without breaking them apart. All right, there's a seed right there, gymnosperms. This is a gymnosperm. These are called naked seed, and you can see the good seeds that are inside this pine cone. Look at all of those that are ready to be released. And so this one right here, that's underneath this scale, do you see the big seed right there? That's a pine seed, and when it falls out of the pine cone, it's gonna do a whirly, whirly, whirly all the way down. So let's watch. Here it is right here, and we're gonna try to keep it in the field of view as it goes all the way down. Really cool. The other part of the pine tree that we haven't talked about yet are these needles. These are the usually the green leaves that are on the uh, conifera phyta plants, and they're not really flat leaves like we're used to, like in this grass right here. Those are more normal like leaves. But these needles are where the photosynthesis takes place in these pine trees. So I'm gonna focus up on that also. Up here right above me, as you can see, those needles are what are collecting the sunlight to make photosynthesis for the pine tree. And then finally, we have the most evolved form of plant which has flowers called angiosperms. And basically they use bees to pollinate for them. So follow me over here, this tree and most trees that you see around your yard are angiosperms. They've kind of won the evolutionary battle to be the most uh, prevalent tree that you see out anywhere about. All right, so this is a flower. So obviously this is a flowering plant. So I'm gonna bring it right up here. Just hit the flower in there. And so these are the petals. And on the petals, there's these little yellow parts, which are probably anthers, which have pollen on them. And the middle part most likely is the female part, which is called the pistil with the, uh, with the uh, stigma that can get fertilized. Can you see the little dust that's on my finger right there? So that's the pollen. So what we're gonna do is look at this tree right here. This is also an angiosperm. This is a, a bud about to open, and so I have a flower right here. So come in closer and let's look at this flower. So these are the petals. It smells really good, and so, if you look inside there, we have all of the different uh, anthers in here ready to release the pollen to go pollinate another part of, of the flower. And one last look at my hibiscus bush right here. It has a beautiful flower. And this obviously is an angiosperm, the flowering plants. It releases pollen from these uh, anthers right here and it gets on your fingers and it goes and sticks on the stigma right there and now you have helped to pollinate the female part of the flower.
very cool how they use insects and now humans to help them get pollinated and to reproduce. Angiosperms totally take advantage, evolutionary advantage, to win the battle to help reproduce. Right here we have the moss, which is both the gametophyte generation and the sporophyte generation sticking up right here. No roots, it's non-vascular, no seeds. Then we have the fern frond right here. So the fern has the first set of roots and it has these root hairs here. And if I look at the fern right here, this is vascular, it has roots, and it also has these little spores here. This is the sporophyte part. The gametophyte part would be down here called a prothallus. Now for gymnosperms, these right here have cones, conifera phyta. And so this is a female pine cone and this is the male pine cone. This makes all of that yellow pollen that gets all over everything and it falls and goes through the air inside of the pine cone to fertilize the female seeds right there. These are naked seeds, no fruit. And finally, the last type of plant is the angiosperms, which are flowering plants that take advantage of insects to pollinate the flowers. I hope you enjoyed this plant discussion. Please remember to like and subscribe. We're trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. And always remember, keep science awesome. Ooh, a bear.